والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما غوى وما ينطق عن الهوى إن هو إلا وحي يوحى Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Yusuf and I'm 13 years old. I have studied the Quran for four years, alhamdulillah, alameen, and I have completed the memorization of the Quran. I first started memorizing and trying to learn the Quran when I was seven years old. I, I had no idea how to read or how to uh, even, even Alif Ba Ta Tha, I didn't know anything. And that's when I first met Sheikh Abdul Karim. He first started on a part-time basis. He was uh, obviously keen to memorize the Quran. He would come one or two days a week. And then eventually he committed himself um, to the memorization of the Quran. And then I decided to step it up a little and start taking the full-time classes at Dar al Abbas. And it was the most difficult and most hard journey that I've ever uh, tried to undertake. And many times I just felt like I would never be able to do it and I thought that I would never actually get there because it's not exactly easy. And every night I would be like in dua, in dua, dua, dua. Like asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I can memorize the Quran, that I can memorize the Quran. But alhamdulillah, like due to Allah's mercy, um, last year, alhamdulillah, I finished the Quran. My name is Ismail Sutuhi. I'm 14 years old. I memorized the Quran when I was 10, and I, it took me one year and a half. When I first began, I used to not know how to read, and my dad used to read on me, and I used to follow him. We started uh, with Ismail actually when he was three years old. Of course, it is Kul Hu Allahu Ahad, Kul Aadu Rabbi Al Falak, and Al Fatiha. This first started, and then we moved to phase two, where we actually start sitting with him and having a program, and that started when he was five years old. And then what was really made a big difference was the start of the Dar al Quran. When I started, I used to do one page every day, and I used to be constant. After that, I increased to uh, one and a half. By the end, I used to memorize six pages a day, like, toward my, the end. The students that attend Dar al-Quran, they're all very, very hard workers, alhamdulillah, and they attend five days a week from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And the program itself is very um, intense, so they're making a lot of sacrifices and that. They say the time is the top of your wealth, so I have to make most use of it. And doing it in Quran, so spent my time on the beneficial thing. I still have friends well, that I joke with them the right way. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. My name is Zakaria Al Baba. I'm 15 years old. I've been studying the Quran ever since I was 11. And inshallah, very soon I'll be finished. How long have you been coming to the Quran school, Zakaria? From the start of this year. How much have you memorized? Seven Jews. Seven Jews, mashallah. When a person memorizes the Quran, Ultimately, the first one to benefit from that effort that he puts in is the individual themselves, um, but also his parents. The Prophet ﷺ told us in a hadith clearly that the parents of the person who memorizes the Qur'an will receive a crown on the Day of Judgment, the brightness of which is stronger than the brightness of the sun. So just thinking how my parents will be rewarded, I'll be thinking like, wow, how would I be rewarded? I want it to be from the special people of Allah. So when he calls my name, uh, one of his doors come and I read the Quran to him. But it doesn't end there because the Prophet ﷺ also said that the best of you are those who memorize the Quran and then go on to teach the Quran. And what do you want to do when you grow up, uh, Yusuf? You want to become a sheikh, so you're going to memorize all those books behind you? Yes, inshallah. أمن هو قانت آناء الليل ساجدا وقائما يحذر الآخرة ويرجو رحمة ربه قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون. The biggest responsibility is not really to memorize the Quran. It's more to act upon it. That's not just for people who memorize it. That's for every single Muslim. 
if it's going to be to impress the people or if it's going to be as a, just as a hobby, as something to do, you have to act upon that Qur'an that which you have memorized. Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said in his book, he said, Al-ilmu bila amalin junoon wal amalu bi ghayri ilmin la yakoon. Knowledge without action is madness. And action without knowledge is void. And if you do not make amends for days gone by, you will say tomorrow on the day of resurrection, send us back so that we may act virtuously. And he will be replied to you, O oh fool, you have just come from there. Uh, the ultimate aim and goal of any teacher of Qur'an is for the student to memorize and then act upon the Qur'an. And acting upon the Qur'an is following in the footsteps of the greatest of all men. The one whom Our Lady Aisha radiallahu anha describes as being uh, a walking Qur'an. I think we should take that as an example and we should try to follow him and follow in his footsteps. Even just doing little sunnahs like using the miswak or even just stepping out of the house with the left foot. Any sunnah I knew that he done or said, I implemented it. I've tried my best to implement it. And to me, he was my master. The Quran is one of the, the great sunnahs of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Many Sahaba have memorized the Quran, many of the ulama. And they say the first step to knowledge is the memorization of the Qur'an and it's a big ni'mah, it's a big blessing, it's a, big, it's a great gift from Allah and it's one of the miracles of this Ummah. In relation to the memorization of the Qur'an, it is truly a miracle. In verses, a number of verses of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Qamr, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ that we have made the memorization of the Qur'an easy, so is there a person who is there to memorize it? I remember one student was saying to me, after he'd finished memorizing the Qur'an, he was like lost for words. He, he didn't know what to say, he didn't know what to do. Uh, I think I must have been really exhilarated because I realized that everything that I'd, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'd worked so hard for over like the period of six years, seven years, that was all actually, it was going to happen from the will of Allah and that, that it was going to become a reality. It was something that, uh, I don't think I can describe accurately. It was just, yeah, amazing. So, so I'm really thankful for for a chance I've been given. Quran is in reality, it's everything. The existence of the Quran being alive in a community or in a society is in the same way the soul and the spirit of that community and the soul and the spirit of that society. And the more people we have in the society that are connected to the Book of Allah, the more alive that society becomes. So that the whole town would be like a beehive with the sound of the Quran. And that's the same sound that you hear when you come to a Quran school. <laughs> No matter where you go in the world, whether it be in China, whether it be in Africa, whether it be in Asia, or in the Middle East, no matter where you go in the world, it is one Qur'an, it is one Mus'haf. And the students in Australia who memorize the Qur'an, it is them continuing on with this great, rich and deep tradition of the Muslim Ummah.